It's the award-winning All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in real time. Today, we're going to be talking to the participants, no matter how cold they may be at this morning's event. We'll also be looking at some upcoming racing events this hour we might be interested in, and you could be too. Plus, Conrad will have this week's car clinic and we'll have the stories making automotive news headlines that and more just ahead on today's in real time car show for saturday january 16th 2021 howdy along with mike out of this world mars king conrad DeLong. i'm don armstrong jeff zekin's got the day off but joining us over here <coughs> in the engineering booth the control center mm. is <laughs> is ladies and gentlemen one of his rare appearances mr david Mm. Ainsley. Ainsley. Well, I'm glad you could make it on time. Well, I was trying to get a Bloody Mary, but I heard you go on the air, so I had to leave it behind. Did you forget the time? No, I knew the time. Okay. Just checking. You know, all of us are bundled up and freezing to death, and here you are in short sleeve shirt and shorts. I so don't have shorts on. You've got shorts on. Okay. Uh -huh. So what? what's up? Nothing. I'm just trying to make sure everything's up and running and we're... Yeah, this is my, <laughs> Biff says this is my underwear. He would know. He's he would know. I don't, don't want to know how he knows is the thing. No, he, no, <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, gentlemen, uh, it's good to be with you guys, on at least alive and well so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a little chilly, but, you know, when the, when the air is cold, you make horsepower. More horsepower. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't think that. Mall power. I think what we're really worried about today is does the heater work in the car? <laughs> Those heater delete and radio deletes, they, they, you know, it, this is a problem morning. Uh, it depends on the car. You know, you got to think if you got headers on it, you're going to get some of that radiating heat off of the. Off well, there's an idea. <laughs> we'll or or we'll if you're running a rat rod, then you got floorboard holes that kind of let the heat in. That's right. And, and or the hole to change it so you can have it go through the mufflers or straight out the exhaust. Well, kinda, yeah, yeah. Kind of like an old Volkswagen Beetle. You had the. Because they, they heat it <laughs> off of the exhaust system. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And no, they air condition it by turning the vent windows back. No worries <laughs> about, uh, uh, you know, some sort of a uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. No, inside no, the nah, car. they didn't make enough horsepower to create any, <laughs> any, car, any carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, love the, I love the red truck over there. Well, yeah. um, needless to say, if you missed it, we are live and remote today. At Loopy Tortillas in Katy, off of Kingsland, and the 99 Grand Parkway, and uh, we missed last month's yeah, because weather. of because of weather. Right. And but today the weather is going to be abs well, it is clear blue sky, not a cloud anywhere. And I don't know whether you read my post on our Facebook page or not, but I posted the fact that you know there were so many guys that worked and worked and worked and worked all winter long for Lucky's Rod Run up in Bryan College Station. Well, <coughs> that would have been last, 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 last Sunday. Yeah. So all those guys got all their cars ready to go. And I know I would have been one, but I watched the weather forecast, and I'm thinking, nah, <laughs> I think I'm okay. It's going to be a bit of a mess. It was. And I don't know what the turnout was because I didn't, know, I didn't see anybody post anything from there. I don't know who went. But yeah, it's it, – trying to think if I did see. I think I did see some I'm few people post a couple of things up. It might have been, you know, because sometimes the post is the memories from before, and it might have been some people's pictures from the previous luckies. Well, the only thing that I could think of was the fact that um, it was an ugly, nasty day, and if I owned a windshield wiper company, that would have been my go-to event. <laughs> Let's go and show up there for the few people that were there, but all watching online, waiting for something spectacular to happen. It didn't happen that I am aware of. So to my point, all those guys are probably here today, those guys that would have participated last week. Oh, yeah, because they were week. looking for a place to go. <coughs> and now they found it here at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas. Well, I think that's Frank Talbert out there with the uh, red 68. Hi, Frank. With it the is <laughs> that is a stunning car. That and is a, a and obviously the way that he waved, he knows that. Oh, I, he, I'm sure <laughs> he thumbs up while he's while he's yeah. Oh, and I have, I have a message from Biff when we're off the air to give you. I can't say no, that on the air. Okay. Hey, get Frank to come on. If yeah, if you're still looking for 
people to talk to. So Mr. M Mr. Zekin is out this morning, and I know that he's listening slash watching on the Internet from home. He's a little bit under the weather this, uh, this particular Saturday. He'll be back with us next Saturday. But anyway, Jeffrey, we miss you terribly. Uh, Mars has no clue what he's doing. Absolutely none. So, uh, and, uh, and we hope the uh, proctology appointment helps your memory. Oh, are you talking to Jeff or are you talking no, no, to me? Talk, okay. <laughs> <don't wanna> <laughs> he looked at you, but he was talking no, to he me. No, was, he was, yeah, I was, I was going to say, he I was, was talking looking at you. <laughs> Proctology are us. Well, at any rate, uh, it's so <laughs> glad, good to have you guys with <laughs> us uh, today. Too many people are going, huh? Me? Yeah, yeah are you talking about hey, me? <laughs> cool collection Guilty of cars. Guilty conscience. Cool collection of cars has I showed up already. Never, yes, there is. I never, ever, ever wear a hat or cowboy hat, baseball cap. I never wear anything. Now Today, you have your Tawa. Uh-huh, Tawa. Beanie on. And uh, I went to the restroom a minute ago to wash my hands. Thank you. We Everybody appreciates that because you're supposed to do that and for I, and there was a 20 mirror, seconds and at a time. And obviously the mirror is there. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, backwards this could be construed as something other than Tawa. A-W-A-T. A what? Well, you think about that for a while. And, uh, and I don't really want to think about it at all. Yeah. Don't, don't stress me out. Don't stress me out. So, uh, we're just getting word from, uh, I guess, our <coughs> our fine. Who is that? Is that? Uh, Zekin. Is that Zekin? There's no audio. Yeah, there is. I've got, I've got audio. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you, he just sent the text. I haven't well, you monitored know, it yet. So, so, Jeff knows how to push the record and go live button uh, at, at our facility apparently he doesn't know how to turn the but sound on on, his, on, on, on his, his computer laptop. at home yeah which is kind of fitting it, it all kind of goes into an understanding that we all have with each other i'm not exactly sure what that understanding is but, but we've got a lot of people checking in you know jeff uh, uh candace thackeray philip hurlston i'm surprised philip isn't out here with one of his toys well i'm surprised that uh, well of course candy's probably jealous of the fact that there's no, there's no snow there's on the no ground. There's no snow on the ground. <laughs> it's not a gloomy January day in Kansas City where she is. Yep. But uh, it's an absolutely beautiful yet chilly Saturday. Yeah, it is. Saturday. It's still a little cool. It's chilly. But, uh, you know, high today, what is it, supposed to be 60 or something like that? You get out and cut the grass this afternoon. Uh, the grass isn't growing. It's too cold. Well, uh, I don't really cut the grass at this time of the year. I grind leaves, lots of leaves. Leave them on the lawn. Fertilizer. Okay. So well, right. anyway, Recycle. We are at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy for the annual, annual, the <laughs> monthly. <laughs> it feels like an annual because we weren't here last uh, last month because yeah. of the bad weather. But uh, it's a beautiful day. Nice turnout here. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or any of our other video supported platforms, you can see that uh, there is a nice contingent of a varied array of automobilia. Very varied. You know, there's a couple of C8 Corvettes. There's a Viper out there. Nice uh, uh, nice contingent of Mustangs. Uh, Mopars. There's 68, 68 Camaro. 68. Uh-huh. And the uh, Rat Rod and the, uh, the Dodge Ram. He's not leaving you know, already, he, is he? Well, I hope not because he's supposed to be up here to talk to us about 830 because it's not really a Rat Rod. I went and looked at it and talked to him. That thing is pristine. Oh, there is okay. not any rust anywhere on it. It can't be a rat rod if it don't have any rust. Okay. Well, apparently he's leaving. Yeah. So I guess that opened up 815 for us. But Way to go, Mars. Also, if you, if you're, if you're Did you happen to tell these people that, you know, the radio show is is uh, is on? And Well, there's also, if you've not seen one yet, there is a Ram TRX sitting out here. Well, what they likely refer to as the T-Rex. T-Rex. Uh-huh. Um, As a matter of fact, there was a video that I watched. I guess it was on YouTube. Uh, somebody said, you've got to watch this. And th this guy clearly has more money than sense. He had his brand new TRX like that one. I think it was a different color. It was black. And he, and he was talking about a $92,000 truck. Uh -huh. and, and he decided that he was going to jump a ravine. On some farmland somewhere because... But no, he didn't want to be seen doing this because he knew that he was going to trash it. Yeah, well, he, he tore a little bit up, but he really didn't tear the truck up dude, at, at all. Dude, no. okay, so you just spent $92,000 on a 
on a 392, 500 horsepower, bad to the bone off road truck that can go on the highway. I and, mean, this and, thing is awesome. And he proved he could. Yeah. Well, he proved that he could jump a ravine. Mm-hmm. And when he landed, the front end was at about a 45-degree yeah. angle. It, 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 it wasn't balanced quite right. And he had all these tires strapped in the back trying to add weight to keep the tail down. It, yeah, so it he put tires work. in it instead of lead in the back end. That made, made no sense. Or thing. wings on the front end. To get it what are you asking me? I was asking David if he wanted something to drink. Well, I want something to drink. Are you buying? Yeah. Okay. Because they have all sorts of beverages here at Loopy Tortilla. And I'm thinking that it's so cold. I'll take a Bloody Mary. Oh, well, I was going to send her after it, so I'll have to go get it. (laughs) Well, that's fine. I was sending her after hot chocolate. They ain't got that, but they do have coffee and decaf. No habla coffee. What do you mean, no habla coffee? I don't drink coffee. Well, then get in there and get the Bloody Marys and mimosas. What what else do you want? What else do you need other than some sort of alcohol injection drip? Only, that would probably be, only if be fitting spite. for you at this time of the morning. Because <laughs> he didn't he didn't partake last night. Cause no. Because he, he had to leave the house at 3.30 this but morning. But we got, we got to get oh, him sober yeah. by noon today. So whatever it is, you need to go do it now. Okay. Hello? I, I'm good. If, if it, y'all don't want anything, I mean, what is that? What do we, we just got through saying we do I know, want but something. We, oh, my bad. All right. All right. I'll be back. No ice. No ice. We don't need that. Yeah, That's in the ice. air. At any rate, um, <laughs> As we, we, off we were actually topic. hoping that Stan would be here. Normally he is at this time. Stan Holt, the uh, founder of the Loopy Tortilla group of restaurants that uh, puts this great once-a-month event on. He's and probably home in, in front of the fireplace <laughs> <Yeah>. listening <laughs> to us going, boy, I'm sure I'm glad I didn't get out there when it's this cold. Well, there are a couple of fire pits out here that are really nice and yep. work just right at this time of the morning. And they've got crowds around them. They d- well, crowds. Well, not crowds. Three people I was going to say, you, I mean, you, you consider. This is, that's social distance crowds. You know, when two or more are gathered together, <laughs> that's a crowd now. Uh, that's a social event. So I, you, you can define that any way that you need to. Anyway, so the, yes, David? You, you can put the microphone yeah, down we and talk. Can, we, you're allowed to talk to us if you pot uh, your mic up. Well, I can do that. Okay. Mm. You are going to say? So Mars is, you said his, car, his truck has 500 horsepower. Uh-huh. No, it's 700. 707. Uh, Remember, that's a Hellcat motor. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. So it's not the 392. It's the Hell. You're right. Yeah, yes. It's, now, it's now that the I Hellcat motor. Yeah. I, I stand corrected. I, excuse Don. He's, he hasn't driven one yet. No, I haven't. But you've driven a But dozen. Mars got, got yeah. to, just like he does the Infinities. I don't get to drive the Infinities because somehow or another, Infinity has decided that I'm not worthy. Okay. And Mars is? Why? He's not president of anything. He has no reason to get all of these privileges. Bitter much? A lot. (laughs) A lot. Well, here comes some more Camaros. The whole Camaro contingent's out here. Well, I like Camaros. As do I. Matter of fact, uh, uh, what show was I, I was watching? Um, oh, uh, the Dallas show where they where they go through the uh, auction. Oh, Auction King? No, not Auction King. No. Yeah, I know which one you're yeah. talking about. Tex- uh, whatever. It's yeah. out of Dallas. And they have everything from junkers to rush buckets to nice, pretty nice cars. I <laughs> would not buy a car from any of those people after watching what they do. <laughs> so they had a, I don't know, it was probably a 10 or 15-year-old. Boy, that's a nice Camaro there. It's probably a 10 or 15-year-old Camaro that only had like 4,000 miles on it. It was yellow, and it was, you know, pretty much a stock Camaro. Nothing special, nothing fancy about it, but it's extra clean. And I thought, man, you know, I, I can do that. And I think that they were wanting, I don't know, four or $5,000. Oh, that's it, cheap. Yeah, it was cheap. Of course, you know, they couldn't stand to leave it alone. They had to go and, you know, paint the wheels black and do this and do that. to sit. And so they wound up selling it for like three times more than they paid for it. Man, I well, need that's to the objective of it. Well, I know, but um, I need to get me in the bottom line on that one. Give me just a little V6, old 10, 15-year-old Camaro, clean, never been wrecked. Um, I'd do that. They're I, out there. I, I know they are. I don't know that they're out there with that low a mileage on them, though, you know, to find something with that low a mileage. You know, you can so. find stuff like that if you look, yeah. and you'd be patient. Well, 
patient. That's something neither one of us have much of. No. I don't think that any of us car guys are patient We're about all, anything. all in a hurry. Yeah. If you if you like, hey, man, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and put that supercharger uh, on my small block Chevy Camaro. Now. Yeah, well, that's... And then you go ahead and invite five or six friends over, and you all jump on it, and you have it done. Uh-huh. That's, that's if, you, if you can get through the uh, booze-infused uh, excitement well, the, about the, it. The alcohol doesn't come out until everything's bolted on, and you're ready to tune no, it. it. No, <laughs> it, it comes out the next day after you've passed out and uh, feeling really lousy the next day but sober. Well, and, and, and regardless of the genre of car that you're into whether you're into old muscle new muscle jeeps um hot classic hot rods that's not uncommon is to have a whole group of people show up as you're talking about what your upgrade is to your vehicle and they all jump in and kind of help you do the upgrade you know? and you know speaking of jeeps jeep wranglers do you realize that jeep wranglers back in my day and your day too for that matter they were cheap Relatively speaking, they no, were very, very cheap, so. <clears throat> and they were really bare bones kind of off-road vehicles. Oh yeah, and that because coming out of the military, which is where the where the uh, Wrangler truly came from, the original the original Jeep actually came from. We're passing out Bloody Marys. Um, they were cheap because they were all uh, U.S. military surplus in the beginning. Yeah. And they, they weren't retailing at the volume they are now. You got to look at uh, right now, you know, the Jeep Wrangler was uh, the 16th most popular car for 2020. So, you know, they sold a lot of them. But you, you realize, have you, have you actually delved into, thank you so much, have you actually delved into what exactly these new Jeep Wranglers have on them? Everything. It's like a luxury car. Exactly. So much of a luxury car. A few years ago, they added two more doors to it. <laughs> yes, they did. So that you could haul the family um, comfortably. And the electronics that, that are on them now are, are very much in line with a high-level uh, high luxury car. Oh, absolutely. And especially the new one. You know, uh, the, the, the 392, you can get that big 10-inch screen in there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So the, that whole Uconnect is is now fully available. It is it is evolved into the bomb. Well, the Uconnect. I should another Corvette. Oh, it's Stan. <laughs> Stanton, you didn't tell us that you had a new Corvette. Well, of course you wouldn't. He's got a a, a, a the classic a white C8. Wh- a white with a red interior with a red C8. Yeah. Yeah. How gorgeous is that? Yeah, it really is. You don't see very many of those. I'm surprised too. The white and red? Yeah, white and red. You know, that's it actually wasn't white. You know, I got to see uh, Corvette number three. Did I tell you that? No. I did. Many years ago um, at the Corvette Expo that used to take place in town, mm-hmm. uh, the guy that owned number three? 003 uh, brought the car. And let me tell you something. That's got to be a million-dollar car. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, more than that, probably. But I have to tell you that. I was shocked and surprised by the quality of the build. Oh my God, it sucked. Oh yeah, well, you could see you could see the actual fiberglass, the fiberglass itself. Oh, so it, was, it wasn't a restored; it was like a factory original. Double O three. Well, today today should be considered a, a Corvette day here at uh, Loopy Tortillas. Well, there's you know a bunch why? of them here. Well, you know why. And this is going to be later in automotive history. Today, if December, or, uh, January 16th of 1953, was when they first introduced the Corvette to the public. Not production, but the, the first, co- first the, time. The, the reveal Corvette. of it. Was it at the time. Motorama? Yep. Was it Motorama? No, it was at the New York uh, Auto Show. Oh, okay. So there, there's a reason for all these Corvettes coming out today. Well, it's, a, it's perfect because... Uh, we're all here to celebrate Stan's new Corvette. That's it. Woo! I know. There's a bunch of them here. Have you seen them? Did you? Yeah. You invited Got them a whole all, didn't you? Crowd of them. They came out to celebrate Corvettes with you. Yeah. So they're over there to the left, Stan. Yeah, I love the blue one though too. I, I think yeah, we're going to talk to him cool in a little bit. I think that's a cool color. Yeah. But um, at any rate, 
Yeah, the 003, you could actually see the laid fiberglass through the paint. Un- through the paint. Well, and that's just as technology has advanced. Um, now, well, of course, then all those cars were hand built. Well, and, and the fiberglass probably wasn't the same quality fiberglass they had. Oh, well, no. Whatever yeah. it was, you could see it, <laughs> which, is, which was kind of shocking to me. Plus, it didn't have roll down windows, they were just fold down windows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was very archaic. Of course, it had the. 235 blue blue flame six cylinder engine in it. Nothing special about that either. But if you think of back in the in the early 50s, the performance cars, the Jaguars, the Mercedes Benz, an inline six cylinder was the engine of choice. Uh, and GM in '53 was still in the process, or Chevrolet was still in the process of developing their overhead valve engine because. I don't think the uh, the V8 came out till 54, 55. Five. 55. As a matter of fact. <clears throat> oh, he's back. He just he went to just grab him a breakfast sandwich or something. I don't know what he did. I don't know why you do that because they got the best tortillas in town here. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. But, um, yes, uh, when it comes to the that early model and the 235 Blue Flame 6, I think I shared with you several decades ago that I went to see – Ken Lingenfelter. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And uh, went up there uh, just outside of Detroit. And he's got a magnificent, he's all Chevrolet for the most part. No, and, and that's because he has the relationship and he's done some spectacular Corvettes through the year. So one of the things that he had in there was a 54, a 54 Corvette. And it had on the nose of it, you couldn't, it, just right there where the, Corvette in the lettering was on the front nose of the car. It didn't say Corvette. It said supercharged. I said, well, what is that? He says, let me show you. Opens the hood. And it's got the 235 Blue Flame 6 in it. But they put a supercharger on it from <laughs> Chevrolet. There, and, and part of the reason was is that they were considering just supercharging it as opposed to putting a V8 in it. Oh. At the time, yeah, and, oh, I, I, and that obviously d- didn't take. No, no. But this is a one-off car. I, I'd love to see the intake and how they actually did all that. You know, there was so much room under the hood; it really wasn't that big of a deal. Really, no. And uh, it sat over to the side, kind of like a big Hoover vacuum cleaner. Right, right, right. It was a belt-driven charger that yep. kind of a bolt-on piece. Pretty much, and there was plenty of room in there. And I don't know how much horsepower it added. It wasn't, you know, 1,000 horsepower or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. But uh, apparently it was close to competing with the V8. And as far as horsepower is concerned, of course, you know, well, the, it, the it original V8 been, wasn't all that. No, 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 no. The, the, I think the two, what was it 265 was yeah. the first uh-huh. yeah. the first V8. They really, I mean, I don't even think it had 200 horsepower in the beginning. I think 190 comes to yeah, mind, but I, 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 you know, it was pretty close to 200. And... You know, an inline six cylinder produces a lot of torque. You well, know? So you my, put the my familiar where, familiarity with the with the 235 was my brother-in-law and sister moved down from Wisconsin, and they had this ratted out. This is in the mid-60s. They had this ratted out Chevy pickup truck with an inline. Three, a three-quarter ton utility truck. Oh, gosh. That had the 235 in it. Well, I took the body off of it. I, of course, back in the day. It was all about dune buggies. I was going to make a dune buggy out of it. And I, I Boy, is that the wrong <laughs> chassis for a dune, for a dune buggy? <laughs> Came along pretty well with it. Of course, you know, it had the, this, Wisconsin, though, the you split know. Dr- a drive shaft in it. So, Oh, that's right. The dunes in Wisconsin are white and fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Kind of like it is out here today. They call them drifts. Drifts. <laughs> that's right. That's where the word drifting came in. But at any rate, so I took one of the drive shafts out of it and shortened it. I don't know. must have been at least four feet. Oh, my gosh. So the, the angle of attack between the transmission and the, and the rear end was like 45 degrees. Yeah. But at any rate, it went down the street. I bought some big farm utility implement tires for the back. It was one, one thing after another. But I managed to uh, put a, a race cam in it. I put an Offenhauser, two one-barrel Offenhauser 
carburetors on, uh, on, mar- that, inline uh, six. on that inline six. That thing would scream. It pulled the front wheels off the ground. Of course, there was no body on it anymore. Yeah. 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 But uh, I'm new a huge guy. six-cylinder fan. New guy over uh, – when I was a much younger man in the truck club, he had a, a six-cylinder in a Chevrolet truck. Had a Holley four-barrel on it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, just, it was like – it was a 650. It wasn't a double pumper. It was like a 650, right. so it wasn't a monstrous, you know. But he had the headers and stuff. That little booger would scream up to about 70 miles an hour. Then it kind of died late, out. Late, uh-huh. well, you gotta, to, it would hook them. You got to remember, in uh, mid to late 60s, Pontiac sold a overhead cam inline six-cylinder with a four-barrel quadrajet on it called the Sprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was available in Firebirds and... I, I want to say Tempest, not Le Mans, but that they're, they're a body, their mid-sized vehicle. Move the microphone closer. Okay, is that better? Yes. These guys are not radio guys. Then they have no clue how to work a microphone. They're not on the radio. Well, we're we're not in the broadcasting hall of fame. I don't know why you 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 hang on to that. You like that, don't you? I think yeah, it's cool. I think it's cool. Ho- I'm well, what automotive hall of fame are you in? I'm my own. I'm a I'm. In the, in the, in I'm the, famous in my own mind. In the, in the pissed off Oldsmobile, I got screwed uh, Hall of Fame? No. Well, no. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the GM. The GM. The GM yeah. Hall of Fame. I, I, I still stay in contact with a lot of folks. Um, I mean, you worked it's someplace big, 28 years. You're going to make some friendships. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a big company. It was. Well, it's, it's a big company, and a lot of people uh, have stayed with it. And uh, moved around within it. And, uh, you know, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Ron Novak, actually lives in San Antonio. I Any just, relationship to Kim? Nope. But uh, I just posted on my own personal Facebook page. He's, uh, he's uh, trying to help his uh, sister-in-law sell a 1940 Ford that's in progress. Um, that uh, he's uh, looking, looking for a buyer. So, you yeah. know, the, one the GM people tend to come back, come back uh, around at some point. Sit and talk with. Them. I still own a GM, although I swore I'd never buy another one. Oh, I was talking about employees. Um, you know, and there's still quite a few guys here in town that I that I communicate with. That sure, all work with GM to get yeah. no reason, no reason to be angry with them. And not only that, but I mean, let's face it, every car they make is not bad. No, and no. Uh, and they actually turn out some great. Look at the new Corvette. Many cars they make are wonderful cars. They are. So I can't diss the whole thing, but. No. Uh, you know, like like any large corporation, there is some hits and then there are some misses. Then there's the Aztec. <laughs> the, <laughs> there is the Aztec. I would consider that a miss. Well, chassis wise, the Aztec wasn't a bad vehicle. It, it was, was also the Buick Rendezvous. The, correct. It just and they were just uh, ugly. Ugly, yeah. Yeah. The Buick wasn't near as ugly as the Aztec. Yeah, but it was still it, it still wasn't a, that good looking. No, it, well, it, it wasn't. It just had some. En- Odd angles to the car. You um, think? Yeah. Well, the Aztec more so. The Buick was rounded, but uh, still some odd angles. But it, it shared the chassis with uh, the Oldsmobile Silhouette. And you know when they Pontiac first Montana. when they first came out, they weren't crazy except for the Aztec. Yeah. And they sold a lot of them. Yes, they did. But yeah. I think it was also part of the reason that they said we're not going to build a Pontiac anymore. Well, <laughs> you got to remember Oldsmobile went out before Pontiac. You know, you got to remember Aztec also sold a camper back for, <laughs> you know where you lift up the uh the the rear hatch and then it had this canvas tent thing that fit in there <laughs> and it extended out i was like sure what, may, is, what is your market now you know what that? if they you wanted no to draw clue. some attention at, a, at a, an event like this that get be, one of those and, and put the tent up and there you go people yeah, would, everybody little, would come and look at it maybe sure. a little fire in the back on a morning like this <laughs> Right yeah, there next right. to the, the marshmallows. And uh-huh. Just uh, put it into the receiver hitch. You have one of these little uh, gas gas heater things. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. Pass. Hey, I want to give a shout out. We got uh, Crystal Beach. Bolivar Live is listening. Bolivar Live? Yeah, they're down there. He's down there cruising the beach this morning. Very yeah. nice. Fabian's listening. Richard Tomlin's listening. We got lots of folks. Jeff Heitzman? Uh, Jeff is always on. Jeff always, is always on. Listening. We appreciate your Jeff, we, we love show. you, but you need to get a life. <laughs> You've probably heard that before. Stephen Ruse is out there probably doing warranty claims at his Ford store. So if you want to get your warranty taken care of you get, and you need to know Ruse, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, Stephen's had some health issues, uh, and uh, we hope that you're doing well, Stephen. And uh, 
it's always good to have you along with us. Uh, we do have a, a cadre. Can I say that word, cadre, yep. of, of friends that... Uh, you said worse. Words. I have said much worse. <laughs> thought much worse, too. But, uh, yeah, and so uh, a, lot, a lot of folks are having health issues. Uh, of course, I kind of fall into that category a little bit, but not near as much as some others. True. My back issues have been... And, of uh, course, our, our co-host off the air is uh, George Skelton. You know, George, George, George listens each week. George and, uh, has mental issues, and we, and we appreciate <laughs> he, he's, it. He's got some great posts, though. He's, he does. He's, he's always got some good yes, he comedy. Does. And, and I, think that, I think that he gets, he gets his sense of humor from his dad. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. And we've had good stories about his dad. Wouldn't he run the theater Metropolitan downtown? Theater Metropolitan downtown. Theater downtown. Yep. And uh, for decades... And uh, brought in all the big movie stars and, you know, would get phone calls from them. Hey, man, how you, how's it going? I mean, you know, a real personable guy. Uh, George is up in Temple, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's so, uh, huh? Well, I, I was kind of waiting for our first guest to show up. And he's sitting there. He was just sitting on the other side of Mars. So, you know, yeah. and, and through this conversation that we've been kind of Jabbering. blabbering about, yeah. I've lost all track of time. Well, you, I was kind of wondering where we were going. Well, and you didn't mention anything, so. Uh, well, no, because I'm, I'm working here. Because you're the professional, Don. <laughs> you're working here. <laughs> we just what, follow Where us. did you dream <laughs> that up? If, if my wife is listening, I'm telling you, I'm working. She, you work, Becky. You're working on your third Bloody Mary. <laughs> Becky, we don't know. We, we may have to send him home in some sort of package. Uh, I can't imagine the Uber bill, but you may have to come get him. We really not. Now too your sure. granddaughter's going to drive home. No, she can't. You're driving the TRX. That's right. So. Although she thinks she can. <laughs> How old is she? Fourteen. She's fourteen. Hey, I was driving. Well, we've been waiting for you, but uh, you're just now going to have to wait because we had an open spot for you right off the top of the show stand, Holt. But uh, at any rate, it's good to see you. Yeah. Good morning, Stanton. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, and we're going to have Stan on here in, in just a little bit. But in the meantime and in between time, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, we are going to be back after this break. So stay with us. Uh-oh. I, except the only problem is, is that <laughs> I, I have didn't. To, you have to turn the break music on, Don. Well, no. I, I apparently didn't do too well in my uh, presets. Now, wasn't he busting on us? About getting ourselves ready to I'm, do all of I this. I was just prepping sure you to make smooth. sure you could bust on me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier <laughs> cruise in, and you're invited to join in. Sure. Whether you're a cruiser or a spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, February 20th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Luby Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone's invited. You will see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all at one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Luby Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Luby founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise Cruise in Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, February 20th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's and Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, February 20th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's and Katy. Is your business company permit. looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? You found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, okay, business, or service. Okay, are we ready? To get the tires rolling, I'm always ready. just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. <laughs> 